Welcome everybody, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And as an added bonus, you'll stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music. Just like this, we're gonna take a look at what I would consider is the most cost-effective way and best way to store CDs. Um, now, a little while ago, I had made a video called uh, How to Store 9,000 CDs and Other Useless Knowledge. And in that, I showed uh, this type of box uh, that I'm storing my CDs in. I'm gonna pop the lid off here so that you can get a view of this. Um, it holds uh, three rows. Each of these rows is 30 CDs. So in all, it holds 90 CDs in one of these boxes here. Um, and because they're, they're nice and tightly stacked inside there, they're also kept uh, you know, tight together so that they are protected from jostling around and moving around and uh, scratching things, denting things, and that sort of stuff. So it also makes really easy for if you're gonna move or you need to you know, transport these anywhere. And they stack really easy, just like what you're seeing there behind me. And so um, this box, as you can see on it, it's a, a Staples brand box, and this is the model number of the box. So, uh, you know, it's the 33250, and uh, they're, when they, you know, you pick them up, they come flat like this. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a minute, but they sell them in groups of 10. Um, I don't think they're that much. I honestly can't remember at this point, 15 to $20 or something for like 10 of these boxes kind of a thing. And so we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna show you how to do that and you're gonna need a few things to do it. Uh, we're gonna be cutting them down. So you will need both a ruler that you can measure with and one like this I recommend uh, that is, they, they call it a, you know, a straight edge or a metal ruler here uh, so that you actually have something you can cut against. And then something like an X-Acto knife, retractable one like this is really good, far better than scissors, although you can work with scissors on it. Um, and then obviously a pen of some kind in order to um, mark on here. And so first thing is, uh, as I said, they come like this. If I can try and get the whole thing in there. And so there's this bottom part of it here, this flap, and this just uh, tears off very easily. I'm just going to uh, pull it here, but I gotta lay it flat to, to do this. And it just pops off like that. And so putting this together, uh, this is just the lid. This is easy, but you tear that part of it off first. And while I'm talking to you here, I'm just gonna pop this piece together to, to, to show you this part of it. I usually like to crease these things down first before I do it. Um, and then otherwise you just fold the tabs in on it and fold them over like so. And you do the same to the other side here. And it just uh, very quickly there, as you can see, forms the lid, right? So very simple in terms of these things that arrive, flat pieces of cardboard like that, and um, you know how it is that we get to what we need to get to. What we're left with is this part, and this is the folded down box part. You know, it opens up here, but before we do that, we wanna mark on this. We wanna measure off of this part of the box uh, the amount of this that we need, which is five and seven eighths of an inch. I'm gonna change the camera view here so that we can actually take a look at me measuring this out so that you can see how I'm doing it. Then I'll do the cutting on it um, before I fold it and put it together. All right, so we're gonna change camera am angles and go to that. All right, so we're back here and you can see we've got the box laid out here. We've got our straight edge, we've got our cutting tool, we've got our pen. I don't need the cutting tool yet, so I'm actually gonna move this aside. But if you recall, I mentioned that we're gonna measure, we need to measure this out. We're gonna cut off the excess part of this box that we don't need. Now, using the numbers and the words on it, the 333, 250 part staples, that is the bottom of the box, this area here, right? So that when it's sitting, you're reading it, you know that it's correct. That's how you know that this is the bottom of it. And so we actually need to measure from the bottom of the box up the amount that we wanna keep. That is the five and seven eighths. And so we're just gonna take the, the straight edge that's here and uh, you know count this thing off. You know, So one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inches, right? And then this is an eighth of an inch. This little one here that's really close to it is the 16th of an inch, right? So we got one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. That is where it is that you wanna be measuring to 
when you're doing this. And so the reason I was pointing out what's the bottom is it may be hard to see in the video, but there is a very faint line here where you're going to fold the box. And this is perforated. And that's what I'm using to measure up on. It may look like I'm just measuring in the middle of nothing, but I'm not. There's a raised line that you'll feel when you have your box and you can see it reflected in the light. It's a crease in the box and this perforation. And so I'm just going to simply lay down my um, measuring tool that's on here and I measure it out and I'm putting dots on here on this thing um, at uh, these locations and you always want to do at least uh, two locations so that when you're putting down the ruler my ruler happens to be 18 inches and I don't know if you can see the dots but this dot and this dot and I'm aligning those points on there and so make however many dots you need along this box so that when you lay down the straight edge on it and you bring out your cutting tool and you go to cut this portion you've got a nice straight line you know that this is parallel to the bottom of the box and that's the key thing here right so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this a little bit here now so that you can watch as I do this. It does take a number of cuts here in order to get this just right in it because uh, we are cutting through the cardboard and be very careful. Watch your fingers in this, um, go slow. I always recommend, you know, run the, the, the knife through a couple times. I don't try to cut the whole box all at once. I'm just cutting layer by layer as I'm going through this. Um, I happen to be doing this very lightly. I would recommend anyone else put down some protective material under your box um, so that you're not cutting into like a wood floor or something along those lines like that. And then again, just pick up where you left off and continue to cut through. It takes several cuts to do so, but after about three cuts, you can see that it just separates like that. Make sure you close up your cutting tool so that nothing happens there. And then we are left with this portion of the box having removed what we don't need. The box itself is still attached, so we're gonna finish doing the assembly. There's this part that we have to pop right there. I think if we flip it over, there's this side here that we have to do the same thing to. So we pop that part up. And then we're left with this kind of odd looking thing that does this. But if you follow the instructions that it has on the underside of it, it does tell you how to put this thing together. And so it's very simple. You're just taking the sides, folding them in on this thing and folding it over. That is the bottom of the box. And when you flip this thing over like this, you're gonna lift up this part of it and you're gonna pull the sides in place and put that back down. Now, you'll notice that these things are now sticking up on it and they're too tall. But this is where a straight edge like this comes into play because it's actually allows you to sort of saw just a little bit and if it's a very sharp blade like that I just cut it off perfectly in line with that and I do the same thing over here on this side of it cutting very carefully because you don't want to go too fast and accidentally slide off of the thing and uh, you know harm yourself but then you're left with this box here and we bring the lid over that we previously had on it and voila what I consider the perfect CD size box ready to receive 90 CDs inside it. All right, so we're back in this view just so that we can look at this box a little bit uh, cleaner and clearer here with a little bit of distance away from it. Uh, this is what you end up with here. After you've uh, cut off those flaps, uh, you're left with this, the, the perfect you know right uh, level box here. Um, these inside flaps that kind of fold in right now, don't worry about when you load this thing up full of CDs, uh, the three rows, it's going to hold those perfectly in place. If you don't have enough CDs or you're not using um, <coughs> CDs in it, um, you can put some tape on it to hold it in place. Um, I wanted to point out that this is also a perfect box for holding DVDs. You can actually put in uh, two complete rows of uh, DVDs into this thing. And let me just get a few of them loaded up in here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, 
but uh, DVD, this was a perfect DVD box as well. And you, I don't know how many it holds, but um, you can load this up and it certainly holds Blu-rays uh, as well, but a Blu-ray is a little bit less in it. So you do have some space between it. Sometimes I turn a Blu-ray vertical or something in it uh, to fill that space because I, the part of this is I want these things to be held tight so they don't jostle around and get out of place. But that's another use for this is um, using DVDs in it. And then, you know, if you're, again, if you're not gonna do um, uh, just CDs, straight CDs, but these smaller box sets also fit really well. They are the right height. Uh, they do not stick out of the top of it. And so we can stick a number of these guys in here and you can see that it holds box sets really well too. Um, other book style, diggy pack style type box sets will fit in these very well. Sometimes you have to put a little extra protection in it. And I will say, I generally hang on to the leftover cardboard for just that, that sometimes you need just a little bit of fill in it that so when you put the lid on it, the lid doesn't compress in, um, especially if you're, you're sticking something in it like one of these types of boxes. So I wouldn't always throw this out right away. You know, wait and see what it is that you, uh, you might be putting in your box. And then um, just to quickly show you again, I'll hold up what the, the previous one that I was holding that has the 90 CDs that we're sort of going for in here. Um, and there you go. I mean, in the end of the day, that's what we're going for. A box that is, uh, you know, it's inexpensive and uh, cost effective certainly, but also easy to make and it really protects the CDs, holding them nice, tightly compact, doesn't allow them to jostle around and that sort of a thing. And so uh, just in wrapping things up here as a reminder, uh, you're gonna need the straight edge, you need a, a pen of some kind and a cutting tool. And I highly recommend this X-Acto type blade. Um, because you don't wanna to try to do this with scissors. It's not gonna be a very straight cut when you're trying to cut with scissors. It's the reason we use a measuring and a straight edge tool like this that we can put the blade across and cut. Make sure it's a metal blade. Um, don't do it with a wood ruler because the knife, the X-Acto edge, the razor, when cutting along a wood ruler will cut into that. So you do need something with a metal edge. There are some wood rulers that have metal edges to them, that's okay. But otherwise make sure it is a metal ruler so that when you put the blade against it. And I will say above all, be safe. When you're putting your fingers on the front of it here and you're getting ready to cut, do make sure the fingers are back. I'm an architect, I've built models for many years. Uh, there were more than a few times that I accidentally cut myself a little too tired when I was working on a model. Uh, so I, I will say, please be careful. Um, otherwise, keeping your fingers safe and out of the way, this is a perfectly uh, easy, simple solution to storing CDs, but also DVDs, Blu-rays, box sets, and so forth. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts. Hope everyone has a great day and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.